Hi, I'm Dr. Miller from the Math and Physics Exploration. I would like to teach you about number structure. It may be hard to believe, but I just discovered recently that I really didn't understand number structure. So I'm going to share some of my thoughts with you in terms of trying to learn to understand it better. Let's begin. How numbered structure is presented determines what degrees, to what degree you will understand it. Number structure is simply how we choose to group, which are addition characteristics, and how group, we group groups, multiplications, to create our numbers. We need number structure to help us comprehend large numbers, where a number as small as seven might seem to be a large number. Look at this chart behind me. How many pennies are there? There are too many to try to figure out. We could guess 50, 100, 150 pennies. You'd like to know exactly. So let's see if we can determine a strategy that would allow us to do this. We have organized these pennies in groups of five. There are 19 of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Should count again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Okay, and then we'd like to group them in groups of 10. So we put them in pairs. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. With one group left over. So, if we look at what we have, we have a grouping of 50, because 10 times 5 is 50. We have a group of 4 tens, which is 40. One group of 5, which is 5. And 2 left over, which is 2. And adding those numbers together, we get 97. Well, this is what 97 looks like. One 50 cent piece, 4 dimes, 1 nickel, and 2 pennies. 2 plus 5 is 7. 47 plus 50 is 97. Turns out that what we we're going to do is use a numerical presentation where the first position on the far right represents our ones, the second position represents fives, the third position represents tens, twenty fives, and fifties. The Romans had a very interesting way of presenting this. Since we only have one fifty, they have an L which represents the fifty. We have four tens, they have four X's. One five, one V and two I's for each of those. If I write this down in a structured form, 97, I put this little 10 to indicate it's the base 10, and one quarter, one fifty cent piece, no quarters, four dimes, one nickel, two pennies, I call this the money notation. And this is what it looks like in Roman numbers. So what we're finding is that this one really represents 50. This four represents four groups of 10 or 40. That's basically what we have to get into our minds and understand to really be used number structure. And the reason why I picked this as an example, because our base 10 tends not to see the full richness of what number structure looks like. We basically build a pattern in it which hides from us, unless we look deeply, what really number structure means. The way I created my numbers before was by basically by taking small groups and building up bigger groups. Turns out that turn will be a problem later on, particularly in the money system, which I'll illustrate. But it turns out the better way is to pull out the larger groups first, which you can see if we tried to gather those, we would make lots of problems. But that's the beauty of, num of a number system. It will allow us to do that. So what we have here is 97 pennies. We take out the group of 50, which is a half dollar. That leaves us with 47. Now we take the next biggest coin, which is a quarter. When we take that quarter out, we're left with 22 pennies. Okay, then we subtract two dimes, which is 20 pennies, leaving us with two pennies. Um, we then go to the next coin, which is a nickel. There are no nickels. So we still have two pennies, and finally we subtract out the two pennies, leaving us with no pennies. 
So originally what we had was one fifty cent piece, no quarters and four dimes and one nickel. And what we have now is one fifty cent piece, one quarter, two dimes, no nickels and two pennies. And basically what happened is that four dimes, we took two of them away to give us twenty cents and then took a nickel to make us twenty-five which then gave us the quarter. So we can see in a more complicated system we have to work harder in a, when we work from right to left. But if we work from right from left to right it's much easier and we get a number which takes advantage of the larger groupings rather than smaller groupings. We showed how to group numbers um, in a money system or Roman number system, if we ignore the quarter, and how we do it in a base 10 system. So let's, or not really, so let's show now that we can group them anyway. We have a base 10 system, a base 4 system, whatever we want. So here we have the 97. We try to subtract 100, but that's too big, so there are no hundreds to subtract. The next thing we can subtract is, four, is 9 tenths. So that subtracts 90 from that, leaving us with 7. And then from the 7, we can track 1 7, leaving us with nothing. So that's how we got 9 tenths and 1 7. That's what that really means. There are 90, 9 dimes under this just seven pennies under that. And each of those dimes, of course, is uh, ten pennies. If we went to a base four system, where you'll notice it's structured very much like the base ten system, except we multiply by four. Four times one is four, four times four is sixteen, four times sixteen is sixty-four. So the biggest number you can subtract would have been minus, it was sixty-four, since 128, which would be uh, I'm sorry, 256, which has been the next number is too big. So we subtract 64 from that, we get 33. And from 33, we can subtract two 16s. That leaves us with one. We can subtract no fours. And from the one, we can subtract one one. So 164, two 16s, no fours, and one one. And that will add up to 97. 64 plus 32 is 96 plus 1 is 97. We already showed you this with our money system. And now let's try this in a time base. 97 seconds. Well, an hour is too big. The next thing down, an hour which is 3600. Remember, we're always using our base, our starting base in our unit, to determine how many of those make up our largest number. So then we subtract 60 from it, which is 61. 60 from 97 is 37, and we subtract 37 from 30, 37 and get zero. So we have 160 and 137. Now you'll notice we have colons there. The reason for the colons is because to separate out the double numbers. So no zeros, 160, and uh, one units. So 1 times 60 is 60, 60 times 60 is 3,600, and the next one would be 60 times 3,600. I love this example because what it does, it shows how inadequate our number system is, how hard we have to work in order to make use of it. So when we're dealing with a calendar, what we would have is days, weeks, and months. Unfortunately, the months are all different sizes. So they range from 28 to 31 days. In the other examples we showed a number structure, we had a one number in that position. The weeks are definitely all seven days, and a day, of course, is a day. We could get in finer details, but I won't. So now, a problem for this. A man makes four toys a day. He does not work on weekends or holidays. He starts beginning of January to make 400 toys. What date is the job completed? Well, we're going to show even with this peculiar structure, we can still use the same concepts to convert as we did before. So the first thing we discover is while a day, may, a week may be seven days, for purposes of this, a week is five days. So, if we take 
400 and divided by whoops oh let's get back to what my whoops was we had 400 toys that we were to make and we make four toys a day so 400 divided by 4 gives us 100 toys but we are also going to have to add three days because if we look at our calendar there are one two three holidays during that period of time so even though we don't work on those holidays, they will push our time forward. Okay, so if we take the number 103 and divide it by 5, that will give us 20 weeks with 3 days left over. Okay, now in order to be able to use this on the calendar, we now have to go back to 7 days a week. So 7 times 20 is 140 days. So what we are now uh, basically going to have to do is to lay those 140 days out here. And what I did is I showed in the green ones, which are part of a week, and the red ones, which are a full week. So we can see how these have been laid out on the calendar until we get our uh, uh, 140 days. And we can sort of get a little feel for that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That gives us 5 times 14 is 70 days. And if we count the red ones, we will get our 30, which gives us our 100 days. Okay, so now let's start with um, 143 days because that was 140 plus 3 is 143 days. And we begin by subtracting off the number of days in each month. So the first month is 31 days. We subtract that off, we get 112. The next month is 28 days. We subtract that off and get 84. The next month is 31 days. We subtract that off and we get 53. And this month is 30 days. So we subtract 30 off from that and we're left with 23. And so this would say that we fall on the 23rd day. So uh, very interesting in terms of how we had to solve this problem. We use the same techniques that we did for converting money and for uh, converting numbers into other base systems. Except the big difference here was that all months weren't the same length. In fact, we find this problem in general when we're trying to keep track of time in terms of days and years um, because of the way the moon revolves around the sun and the earth around the earth and the earth revolves around the sun. So what we see in this particular problem is how we're modifying how we apply the math to it. And so this is a legitimate problem for number structure. Now why would we be worried about other bases? Is there an advantage to it? Well let's take the following problem. A photographer takes 3,661 pictures and he takes the rate of three seconds to take one picture. So if we wanted to calculate that in the usual way, what we would do is multiply three times 361 and we would get 10,983 seconds. So first we divide by the hours, which are 3,600, and that's three hours. Subtract away the three hours and seconds, we're left with 183 seconds. Now we want to find out how many minutes. Divide by 60, we get 3, and that is, uh, is 180 seconds. I miswrote it here. Subtract the 180, and we're left with 3 seconds. So it's 3 hours, 3 minutes, and 3 seconds. Well, look at this. 3,600 is 1 hour, 60 is 1 minute, and 1 is 1 second. That's 1 hour, 1 minute, and 1 second. Multiply it by 3, multiplying 1 is by... Three is easy, and we get three hours, three minutes, and three seconds. Now, the trick in this problem is we're converting to base uh, 60 before we start doing our calculations, which requires smaller numbers and smaller calculations, which we can do in our head. And there's less chance of making an error because I've tried this problem with people doing it this way, and they usually get the wrong answer. Now, while we're about it, I want to mention something about zero. Because zero is not nothing, but we've been using that to fill in the space when we don't have a number, say, from one to nine. We create our numbers by adding one to the previous number. So 
The number before 1 is 0, and when we add 1 to 0, we get 1 again. So 0 doesn't change the sum. So we can now see how 0 got into making our numbers, not because it was nothing, but because it was the number before 1, and then as a result of that had the property that it didn't change the sum. The position of count determines the number of items in that box. So every box contains the basic unit. Um, so in the ones box, if we're dealing with tens, one is the basic unit. In the next box over, which is the ten unit, the basic count is ten. And in the next box over, which would be the hundreds, we would have a hundred items in there. So one is a hundred items, two is two hundred items, three is three hundred items. That's what that means. Okay. Um, we multiply the count by the basic numbers associated with get the total count in that box. So where we, we one is what we conventionally have in that first box, if we put a three down, that means we have three ones in that box. In the second box, if we put down a six, then we have six tens or sixty items in the box. With the money representation, we do not always have an amount in a box that can create the next box over. So while two dimes is twenty cents and three dimes is thirty cents, 25 is somewhere in between. So we have to back up to a box in order to fill that out. This special requires special care in regrouping. Okay, and so we show that, if, uh, in this case we're going to be doing addition, 99 plus 2 is 9 plus 2 added to the unit's position. Well, if we take 1 away from the 2, we get a 10 and a 1. Well, 1 10 belongs in the 10 blocks. Since we already have 9 in there, we're now going to have 10. Okay, and if we regroup this, 10 plus 0 is still 10, but when we have 10 tens, that's 100. So that moves a 1 into the 1 box. Now I remove the parentheses and we see the number 101 when we add 2 to 99. We have regrouped so as to have full grouping from left to right. This gives us a canonical form and allows us to compare numbers from left to right. There is not sufficient complexity in the decimal system to completely understand number structure. However, understanding money structure makes it easier to study other systems. So this is the lesson for the day. I hope you understand it. If not, I have to work on it some more. Thank you for listening.